大家好 ，I'm Nathan Rich, aka 火锅大王 I've been sick recently, which is always a strange experience. My sense of what's going on around me gets dulled, then bends inward. Eventually, I'm not aware of almost anything beyond myself. The only work I was able to do was make a new intro and outro, and a bit of research for the history series. As the sickness fades, though, awareness returns, and the imaginary world re-enters my focus. You know, the imaginary world that you're in, the people who are all in my mind. Okay, maybe I'm still sick, but imagination has its limits. For example, I couldn't have imagined that I would have seen this video today. I'm talking, of course, about a video called "How China Is Framing the Hong Kong Protests." But remember when I made this video exposing the New York Times for lying, intentionally mistranslating, and deceiving their subscribers about China? If you haven't seen it, I recommend you take a look. It really exposes just how far the New York Times will go to create a biased story. The reason I bring it up is this: "How China Is Framing the Hong Kong Protest" video is also produced by the New York Times. In that last video, I gave this warning to the New York Times. I told them for future videos about China, you better come correct next time because I'm watching you. The New York Times released another propaganda piece about China. Let's take this thing one line at a time. It's short, so I can actually address everything. Foreign influence, terrorism, possible intervention. This is how China is trying to shape the story of what's happening in Hong Kong. Sorry, what do you mean? This is how China is trying to shape the story. That's how everyone is shaping the story, isn't it? I mean, that's the story. We 100% know for a fact there is foreign influence. We know 100% for a fact there's terrorism, and we know 100% for a fact that China is prepared for a possible intervention. What part of this is not correct? Better yet, if you aren't shaping the story in this way, what is your agenda? Those are the facts. If you don't want to talk about those facts, why don't you want to? Could it be because Dean Baquet told you what to say? You know the executive editor of the New York Times who recently fell into the international spotlight. Oh, you didn't hear about this? That's right. The New York Times isn't reporting about this incident. The last thing that mentions his name is an article about one of your editors making racist tweets. There's no mention of this extremely big story. And what is this story? Dean Baquet was recorded explicitly directing the New York Times to change their reporting focus from Trump Russia to Trump racism. That's right. He's been caught explicitly and specifically telling the New York Times what to report on and what not to report on. So why don't you talk about these facts? Is he the one telling you how to report on Hong Kong? For weeks, anti-government protests have gripped Hong Kong, with anger rising over China's growing influence. The Chinese have responded by trying to control the narrative. Sorry, the Chinese have responded. Who are the Chinese? Hong Kong is part of China. They are Chinese. Are you talking about Hong Kong people? Are they trying to control the narrative? Who are you referring to when you say that? The Chinese have responded by trying to control the narrative. Here's how. This is Junius Ho, a lawmaker in Hong Kong with strong ties to Beijing. Every politician in China has strong ties to Beijing. It's the capital city. What does that even mean? At this press conference, he shows off pictures of foreigners seen at the protests. Oh, so there is foreign influence in the Hong Kong protests. You've just proven it. So, what do you say, New York Times? It's an attempt to tie them to some kind of outside influence. Sorry, what? He doesn't need to tie them to outside influence. They are outside influence. You are intentionally skewing this to act like photographs of foreigners protesting is somehow not evidence of foreign influence. It's literally foreign influence, and don't get me started on deeper, broader influence like how the American government funds pro-democracy movements through NED. This is not only proven; it's literally on their website. 有説佢哋話係記者，但係實際上係咪咁簡單咧？我哋亦都需要去去去去研究同埋去去去查查清楚嘅。Yeah, I agree. If you ask me who these foreigners are, I'd say this. Most of them are probably idiots who think that they're doing something helpful. A few are probably CIA agents and other kinds of government operatives. Some of those agents are probably observing, and yes, 
some of them are probably actually helping to instigate and push this rebellion along. That's my opinion, and it's not to be taken as true based on my word alone, okay? But the point is, yes, maybe it should be investigated. Foreign influence and anti-government sentiment are also common themes in posts by CGTN, China's international media outlet. Probably because foreign influence has been a major issue in China in two time periods. The first was the hundred years of foreign attempts to break China into pieces that ended with the rise of the CCP. And the second is the current wave of foreign influence that started with the American invasion of Korea and continues to this day with constant Western interventionalism. Right or wrong, these are the issues that people should be concerned about. They shouldn't be panicked and freaking out, but yes, they should be aware of it. It should be reported. This post shows a tweet from former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who's voicing support for the Hong Kong protests. The tweet is used as proof that the U.S. is interfering in Hong Kong. No, it is not. No one thinks that that tweet is proof that the U.S. is intervening in Hong Kong. No one is looking for proof. The proof is already there. We have foreigners protesting. That's interference. We have the U.S. government directly funding pro-democracy movements in Hong Kong through NED. That's interference. We have Twitter banning pro-unity accounts claiming they must be run by the Chinese government. That's interference. No one is looking for proof. It's proven. Clinton's tweets were also part of a music video that CGTN published featuring Chinese mainland rappers. Hey, Mrs. Clinton, you know nothing about Chinese citizens. Now I got some words from the president. Wait, wait, wait. Don't skip past that part. That's the best tweet reply maybe ever. Go back. So Clinton tweeted, May we all stand in solidarity with the people of Hong Kong as they speak out for democracy, etc., etc. A bunch of hollow virtue signaling while encouraging violence and insurrection. But look at this response. No, please. Last time you stand with solidarity with others, Libya, Syria, Iraq, Yemen, all of them burned to the ground. <laughs> oh my God, that is savage. The reply went viral. Somebody run us, get up up from us. One story in the People's Daily, the official paper of China's Communist Party, was blunt in its reporting on foreign influence. There is no question that the United States has its hand in what's going on in Hong Kong, though to what extent is hard to measure. Wait, I'm sorry, was that the end of the first section? This video is almost halfway over now, and all you've done so far is say, China's just trying to make it seem like foreigners are influencing things in Hong Kong and then showed concrete evidence that it's true. And this last quote from the People's Daily is mind-boggling. The paragraph above the one you highlighted says, not a single US politician has condemned the violence in Hong Kong. Well, has one? Who has condemned rioters destroying the city? Anyone? The next paragraph says, there was a meeting between Hong Kong riot leaders and the political unit chief for the US consulate general. That's interference. They are showing you exactly how it's happening. And pay attention to how the New York Times reacts. Rather than argue against these claims, it instead takes the one paragraph that is scientifically, objectively, totally factual in every way and calls that into question. The claim the United States is involved with what's happening in Hong Kong, but it, the extent is difficult to measure, is 100% objectively, scientifically, totally correct. There is no possible way to doubt that statement. And yet that's the one they cast as doubtful. That, my friends, is a technique called gaslighting. It's a popular anti-rational tactic intended to defeat surrounding data by removing the most stable ones. If you can't even believe the one thing that is 100% proven, then nothing else can be believed. Amazing! Chinese officials are increasingly framing the protests as threats to national security. As soon as the protesters started smashing into government buildings, I would have put all of Hong Kong under martial law and sent in tanks, infantry, aircraft carriers, and waves of riot police. I would have stopped the airport and seaports entirely, shut down the internet, phones, and electricity until the riots were back under control. That's what I would have done. But what did China's government do? It issued a warning, and then another, and another, and another. And it moved troops. It released a video. It did this and that and the other thing. It's very, very slowly moving towards doing something directly about the issue. You see, my hot-headedness is why I'm not a good politician. 
I'm not the kind of guy you want running a country because acting how I want to act is not how you keep stability. So yes, they are increasingly describing it the way I've already been describing it. They are not inflammatory. I have the luxury of calling these rioters dangerous as soon as they started kicking police officers in the face. The government doesn't have that luxury. There's also a pattern of focusing on protesters being violent. That's because the violence of the protesters is the story. The original protest may have been more peaceful, but the story now is clearly that they are becoming more violent. That's the real story, what's actually happening. Again, why aren't you reporting this actual story? This video is so stupid, it's frustrating. The media labels these demonstrations as organized by a small group of rogue actors. They are. Whoever wrote this hit piece knew that no one would challenge them. I can tell because nearly every single thing in this video is so weak, even the slightest pushback in this entire video falls to pieces. So far you have said nothing. You have said nothing but China is reporting that the riots have violence in them, which they do. They're being organized by a smaller number of people, which they are. Foreigners are intervening, which again, they are. Video of simulated military exercises carried out by police in mainland China show the protesters as dangerous rioters. Military exercises carried out by the police? You mean police exercises? Why would you use the word military here? Oh, right, propaganda. And what kind of police exercise would you recommend, New York Times? One where the protesters kneel on the ground peacefully and quietly while police beat them? Of course they train in the extreme situations. Are you, I mean, how else would they? Oh, I, I, maybe you're trying to suggest that these exercises are dumb because Hong Kong protesters aren't crazy like that. Okay, you're right, I guess. Uh, Hong Kong protesters aren't acting wild and committing violence. Carry on. And when protests at Hong Kong's international airport escalated, CGTN MP- uh, I'm sorry, I know you have some stupid point here, but um, these are the real protesters? Or are these still the military police exercise protesters? Because they look exactly the same to me. Actually, these people look more violent. Anyway, uh, go on with your garbage propaganda. CGTN emphasized an incident in which a reporter from the mainland was tied up and beaten by protesters. Jesus Christ, just look at how the New York Times says that. CGTN emphasized an incident in which a reporter from the mainland was tied up and beaten by the protesters. Hey, Dean Bacay, apparently I should just speak to you directly since you're the one telling the New York Times what to report on. Why aren't you guys emphasizing this? This is a Global Times reporter named Fu Guohao. And get this, New York Times, if you had actually done your job and reported on the news that's happening, you might have revealed something like this. The reason that they tied this reporter to a chair and beat him is because they thought he was a police officer. Think about that. They were looking to beat up police officers. Where's your report on that, New York Times? Are you even pretending to be a news agency anymore? The next day, many demonstrators apologized for their actions at the airport. CGTN did not report this. Yeah, I didn't care about this either. People apologize for beating reporter is not a story. They are sorry because they were looking for a police officer to beat, but instead got a Global Times reporter. This is such a disgusting video. Chinese media put out this video about its police in Shenzhen. It shows the People's Armed Police Force stationed in a city that borders Hong Kong. The video says the People's Armed Police Force shall participate in handling riots, disturbances, severe violent crimes, terrorist attacks, and other incidents disturbing social peace. Well, that sounds exactly like the right kind of police to deal with the violence of anti-government riots, right? Perfect. China also released this video of anti-protester drills being carried out by the Hong Kong garrison of the People's Liberation Army. Satellite images and video confirm China's show of force in the region. It's unclear if China's uniformed police will actually be deployed in Hong Kong. Yes, China's preparing troops to stop Hong Kong from destroying itself. Thank God. What, what is your point? And the People's Liberation Army already has a troop presence there. 
Instead, these videos are more likely a show of nationalism to prevent the movement from spreading to mainland China. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What did you just say? This whole time, I was thinking that this was intentional propaganda, but that last thing you said makes me think otherwise. Maybe you truly are ignorant of China. What you just said there is actually crazy. Is it in your mind you think there's a lot of people in mainland China who want Hong Kong to break off and become a colony of Britain or America? Do you think there's a risk of the Hong Kong chaos spreading to the mainland? You are wrong. There are probably seven people in all of mainland China who actually think that. They also act as a reminder that military intervention in Hong Kong remains an option. Good, do it. Send in the PLA and anyone else necessary to get the island under control. Don't create violence. Don't harm anyone that you don't need to. Make it as peaceful as possible. No one wants an overly violent crackdown. That's not what anyone is saying. No one in China is saying that. But as far as I'm concerned, any time you want to get Hong Kong back into a peaceful state is fine with me. So thanks, New York Times, for that reminder. But what's noticeably absent from Chinese reports on Hong Kong? People are kept in the dark about the real reasons for the protests. No, everyone in China knows the real reason. You want me to be real? You want to see what actual honesty looks like? Here, I'll give you some for free. Hong Kong people think they are part Chinese and part British. Because Britain dominated them for so long, they think British people are superior to Chinese people. Therefore, they want to move closer and closer to British culture and identity and move further and further from Chinese identity. Also implied is that they believe or feel that they are in some intangible way just better than other Chinese people. That's the real truth. And that's a big problem because they aren't better than other Chinese people. And you aren't either. End the Western colonialism mindset. End your anti-China propaganda. Start reporting the news, New York Times. Just pretend Dean Baquet is telling you to do so. Get to actual work. Thanks, everybody. See you soon.